they don't have to worry about building a personal brand outside of football. These companies are going to come to them and say, hey, you just won the Heisman. Here's this brand deal. And they're going to be like, cool, I'll post about whatever. It's the everyone else. It's the swimmers. It's the volleyball players. It's the, you know, like the ones that might not necessarily get the organic brand deals just because you're naturally great at your sport. Those are the ones that you're going to benefit the most from developing a holistic brand and a holistic identity beyond just athletics yeah. as well. Hello, my name is Aaron Wexler and welcome to another episode of Within the Game. Within the Game is all about how to treat your craft and your life like a game so that you can stay inspired, have more fun, and be the best version of yourself and ultimately create better results, lift everyone up around you, and find fulfillment both in and out of your game. We talk about mindset expansion, personal growth, and how to use the law of attraction to be the best version of yourself. And I want to thank you, the listener. Thank you for being on the podcast journey with me. Please like, subscribe, and share, and really engage. I love seeing and hearing feedback from you. Today's guest is the one and only Corey Camp. Corey, I'm a fan, and I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. Corey, thank you so much for being here, man. Aaron, dude, thank you for having me, and I love that intro. I need that energy on my show, you know? If, Let's let go, me know man. your rate. We'll, we'll bring you over. Let's go, man. It's all about energy, right? Energy. All oh, right. So, Corey, dude, you're a former D1 athlete as a swimmer at the University of Delaware, a best-selling author for your book, Forever Athlete, a personal flow coach, founder of Forever Athlete, and host of Forever Athlete radio podcast. You help high achievers release stress, increase productivity, and thrive under the pressure of uncertainty. You have worked with top athletes, entrepreneurs, and executives to help them get in the driver's seat of their life. Your Instagram is at Corey Camp, and I'm a fan, bro. I'm a huge fan. Again, thanks for being here. We're going to jump right in to my first question, which I always ask everybody, what does inspired living mean to you? Mm, it's a great first question, man, right off the bat. I think to me, living inspired, inspired living in general is waking up and feeling called to do whatever you're going to go do that day, mm. living that day with intention, with some sort of driving force behind it. I don't want to use the word purpose because I think that gets thrown around a lot in this world. <laughs> um, I don't, I think you can live an inspired life and also still be discovering your purpose. It's not dependent on one or the other. So to me, it's just waking up each day, feeling some sort of fire within you. And you're like, all right, it's time to go do it. Let's go do this thing. Like let's, you're working towards something with some high level of intention behind it. Yes, man. Yes. And the whole idea behind the show that I've created here within the game is because I felt like we all needed more of that, right? And we were talking before this, how like there's so many podcasts out now and people, you know, sharing tools and sharing stories. And, and I think that's great. So I just think it's like the whole idea for me is staying inspired. The idea is like finding whatever that is to just keep you on track. Cause man, there's so many things that bring us down right now, right? Like, I mean, I, th this past week, right? It was a crazy like in the news with Twitch, you know, and, and whenever this comes out, like it's just been really, hard, really challenging, I'd say, um, yeah. you know, for all of us to try to figure out what that word or that phrase inspired living means, you know? So yeah, I, I, I appreciate you and what you're doing with your podcast. And, and I, I actually wanted you to impact that a little bit more because the stay inspired thing, you know, the whole idea of, of the, the thing behind my book, right? The inspired athlete, but stay inspired. How does that fit with what you're doing with the forever athlete and your message and, and your ideas of all that stuff? Yeah, I think it's, it's one of those things to, to look at and be very mindful that it's not a 24 seven. Right. Right. And it doesn't have to be to still have some benefit and show up in your life. It's going to ebb and flow. But to stay inspired and in kind of the way that I'm hearing you talk about it and I'm familiar with, with your work, it's really about do you have tools at your disposal to tap back into that inspiration when you find yourself in those lower moments, in those ruts, in those uh, valleys of life that are going to help get you back up to that peak where you are performing at your quote unquote best. And a lot of, you know, with, 
my messaging, the podcast, the the coaching that I do, the people that I work with and the brand forever athlete as a whole, it's like really focused on recognizing that feelings are meant to be felt. They're meant to come and go the good, the bad, the ugly. They're all just feedback. It's just part of our human experience. And in fact, the moment we can actually lean in and run towards certain feelings, the more we're able to work through them and the the less amount of time that they'll last and they'll stay in our in our life. So if you're feeling uninspired, if you're feeling, oh, I don't, I don't know what to do today, the secret to getting inspired and, and quote unquote staying inspired really lies in face that, sit with it, write mm-hmm. on it, speak into it, talk to someone. Why, why aren't you feeling inspired? What is it right now? Is it because this one thing's not going right? You don't have the money that you think you need to do to be inspired. You don't have the creative inspiration right now. And one of the easiest ways that I like to do that is looking through the lens of what can I do immediately to change my state? So if I'm moving around, literally, I, we talked before this, you're like, bring the energy. It's like, cool, dude, I'm standing. <laughs> I'm standing. Yeah, right, right. Standing changes my state. I'm in a position now where I can be more confident. I can project my voice and can show up the way that I want to show up on this podcast. So if someone's in that rut, just doing something physical to change their state goes a long way. Mm. Being mindful of well, what were the what are the words that you want to use? Start changing that language that you're using in those moments as well. That starts to shift the momentum in your favor. And gets you towards where you want to go. The last thing I'll say there is recognizing that it's a progressive journey. Right, right. You find yourself really in it, like really at the lowest of lows. Give yourself grace as you're trying to get back out of it. And know that it's not an instant thing. And it doesn't have to be. You just need to be able to recognize what is step one. Mm. How, can I, how can I get there? If I can get there, I can get to step two. If I can get there, I can three, four. And next thing you know, you're you're back on track. You're inspired and you're taking mm-hmm. that daily action again. But it starts with just taking that first step, and which can be the hardest, especially when you're when you're in that low. Right. No, man, I really appreciate all that. And I really like how you said it's not a 24-7. And I want to make sure that people understand that that's part of my message too. Like it's not a 24-7 at all. We're human beings. We have emotions, right? We go up and down. We do... You know, we're stoked, we're sad, we have all this emotional, I call it emotional intelligence, right? Because when we're really aware of our emotions, that's when we can kind of go on the ride with the emotions, and then have them be useful, mm. right? Because that's really what they should be doing. They, they they should be productive at some point, in my opinion. Um, because to me, the emotions that we have are our guidance system. I'm a spiritual person. And so I, you know, for me, that's part of my spiritual journey is understanding, okay, where am I along my emotional path, you know, and, and how are these particular emotions driving action steps? A hundred percent. I was about to say, I like to say, um, feelings and emotions are a flashlight forward. Yeah. So if we can sit and recognize it. And one of the things you know, we recognize in the athlete population and the upbringing of athletes and kind of how it always was for so long. It was the messaging of don't feel that suppress it, right. mm-hmm. which to be fair, I think was well intentioned back when it was being introduced and taught that way and coached that way. However, what they didn't, what the mistake they made was they never taught, told us and taught us how to go back and when to go back to process that thing that we mm-hmm. were feeling, right? Right. right. But if you, you look at it no different than if your sport has film involved, if you make a mistake, let's say football, for example, you make a mistake on the football field, you mess up a play, you give up a touchdown. There's a time and place to mope about you just gave up a touchdown. It's not on that next play. It's in the film study the next time you go true. into the film room, right? So we can look at our emotions the same way. Sometimes when we get triggered, it's not the time and place to sit and process. It's we might need to set this aside for a second because there's a job to be done and we still need to perform. And that's where I think this current generation has almost swung the pendulum too far the other way. It's like they get triggered and they're like, that's it. I can't do it. 
I'm out of here, like we're leaving. This episode is brought to you by new sponsor of the show, Ready Fit Go. Ready Fit Go is a new meal prep company based out of Hermosa Beach, California, and they offer delicious and nutritious pre-made meals that cater to everyday people, athletes, and entrepreneurs. If you're like me, taking time to go to the grocery store to cook and do meal prep in a healthy way can be a challenge. Ready Fit Go provides a great solution to this challenge as they offer over 70 options from hot meals to salads to desserts to snacks, and they offer a wide range of choices for all types of diet. Dietary needs. Ready Fit Go is offering within the game listeners 30% off their entire menu. Go to rfghealthyfoods.com and use code GAME30. That's capital G, lowercase a, m, e, the number 30 for the discount. Also, if you are near Hermosa Beach, you can check out their store in person to see all their options. They are located at 1025 Pacific Coast Highway in Hermosa Beach, California. Thank you, Ready Fit Go, for sponsoring the episode. Let's go! And it's like, no, no, you can still, you can, you're entitled to that feeling, feel that, but there's still a job to be done. Get that job done as well. And then come back to it when the time, place and space is right for it. Mm, I love that, man. I, I really uh, resonate with that. And w immediately when you're talking about that, what comes to my mind is this pressure to perform. Mm. you know like uh, and as athletes and entrepreneurs too you know I think there's a lot of crossover with those two titles athletes and entrepreneurs but you know we have this pressure right we're always expected to do great <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. like and and I don't I don't actually think that's a ne necessarily a, a bad thing I think I look I expect myself to do great I think there's a certain thing for expectation right I think there's a tool there's a use for it but I think there come. I think there's also this pressure to perform, and I would like you to unpack that pressure to perform as we get into this mental health discussion. Yeah, because, yeah, because right now, like I said before, like we're in this time period of our society for not just athletes, but for all of us, right? We are all like more aware of our own mental health. You know, hundred percent. Yeah, and I mean, there, let's not beat around it. There is a pressure to perform, whether it be your company within another company, if you're working for someone or as an athlete, there is definitely reason to feel that pressure. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of your, the where it gets tricky is like, sometimes your value and worth can get tied into that pressure and to performance. Mm. That's when we, when we can talk about an unhealthy pressure to perform is when you really view that outcome, that result to be a direct correlation to who you are as a person. And to deal with that is really to start to separate yourself from that. Start to recognize that you aren't your results. Mm -hmm. You are how you show up. You are the output that you put into whatever equation. So when you show up each day, instead of worrying so much about the result that you're maybe going to get, and 99% of the time, you don't, you, you have no influence over that result. You know what I mean? Like swimming taught me this. It was me against me, but also seven other people in the pool at the same time. And it would be so frustrating. I'd be lying if I didn't, if I told you I didn't get frustrated at times where I would do a lifetime best time, never before done, dropped a ton of time and I didn't win. And it would be upsetting, right? If I only viewed success as getting my hand on that wall first, anything else short of that was a failure. I wasn't a good enough swimmer. I should probably just give up the sport, right? Um, but instead, viewing it as, okay, it's me versus me. And there happens to be seven other people doing this at the same time. And because there's seven other people doing this at the same time, I can't control if one of them just goes absolutely out of this earth, you know, lifetime best as well. Right, so right. Yeah. I can use that in two different ways. I can use that to inspire my own performance and raise to that level of competition and get excited about it. Or I can worry about it and be like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know what these seven other people are going to do. I promise you that the first one is a much better way to, to deal with that. So when we're talking about just pressure as a whole, dealing with the pressure to perform. I think one, it's recognizing that pressure is okay. Um, in fact, pressure leads to some level of performance. You need to have some form of risk involved in what you're doing. 
because the end result, what we're talking about here is flow. And it's that in the zone moment where we're locked in and we can accomplish whatever we want. Right. But to get there, it's, it's this weird give and take. You can't force it. However, you can encourage it. So if mm. you're playing any sport, trying to force it, feeling like I need to make this next play or that's it, I'm cut. What are the, like, you're probably not going to make that next play. You're probably going to get cut, unfortunately. So instead, shifting this place of, okay, what do I need to do to make this next play? How can I get excited about the gravity, the, the level of this next play? Go, go there man. and then just one play after another from there. It's that's it really is it's simple, but I know I recognize it's not easy, right? Like it's something oh, that yeah, no. you and I are still learning to this day. We're we're constantly trying to repeat and implement even in our day-to-day -day lives. If we as we run our businesses and we we do the podcasting, we do the books and all this other stuff. Um, it's easy to say it, it's a whole nother thing to put it into practice. No, oh, 100%, man. I mean, I, I like to call myself being curious, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm curious about staying inspired. I'm curious about mental health. I'm curious about the flow state, which we're going to talk about in a second. But no, I, I really hear what you're saying about this, this pressure to perform. I think it's super relatable. And, um, and, and let's just unpack it more with the overall theme of mental health now, because, because of this societal pressure that I'm feeling. You know, like yeah. we're both pretty active on social media. Actually, if you want to tie in social media, that'd be cool too, because that's very relatable to everybody right now. But we're all in Instagram hard right now, like like more than ever, right? Like we're in there, whether we're using it for whatever we're using it for, but we're we're watching what's going on. And it's I think it's adding to this like this pressure to look good, this pressure to perform, this pressure to show success right mm -hmm. as podcasters we want to show that we're succeeding you know like and authors and and athletes i mean they're they're it's like it's protruding in society right now and it, and and another thing it feels like a race it feels like a race like i got to get there before that person you know i got to get there i got to get there you know and it's it, this whole idea of being patient um and enjoying the process and falling in love with the journey itself is it feels like it's it's getting diluted hundred percent. I mean, it, that is getting so much harder simply because of the amount of content we consume, <laughs> yeah. like subconsciously, it's not even like our choice half the time. Most of us open up this, this phone thing. And before we even catch ourselves, we're in the Instagram, we're in the TikTok, we're in whatever, right? right. And we've consumed a couple pieces of content. And so to that point, it's like, whether you know it or not, you're consuming at a, a level that is way higher than any any generation before us has ever seen. So no wonder the the comparison game and the trap is ever more prevalent in our generation because you're seeing a hundred x or a thousand x probably even what our parents and grandparents saw on a day to day basis. Totally. And then that can lead to you feeling like you need to do more or obsessing over the numbers over the metrics. <laughs> and yeah, one of the ways that like, it always helps to zoom out and be able to put stuff in perspective, right? And one of my favorite sayings that a friend of mine tell me once, I was kind of bitching about numbers about views. I was like, I don't know what it is <laughs> lately. But right. I've been pouring my heart and soul into this content. And it's just not getting the views that I want it to get. Mm -hmm. And she was like, how many did you get? And I was like, I got like 2000 and she was like, you're complaining about 2000. And I was like, <laughs> yes, I'm complaining about 2000. I should be getting. And then I was like, wait a second. Why am I saying I should be getting more? I should be one grateful for what I have. And then the perspective shift she provided me was when's the last time you had 2000 people in one room? I said, never. And she goes, that's still so that's still like such a cool thing of social media. You yeah, get to show true. up. I get to create something here in my room and put it out in the world and 2000 people will see it. Yeah. That's awesome. I can do yeah. the same thing and 200 people will see it. That's awesome. Yeah. It's this huge megaphone that our generations before us never had. So with it comes a, a dual responsibility. It's like this dual edged sword, right? Like making sure you're using one end to your advantage without falling too victim to the other end of things, which is 
becoming an ever increasing tough thing. Even this like latest update with notes on Instagram. I hate it because now it's another thing. It's another thing. I'm, man. Like, I'm fighting. I log into the home screen. I'm fighting the, the urge to scroll down and watch stories. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll just go check my messages. And now I'm like, but now I have notes that I need to like fight the urge to go see what people are saying and respond to messages. This is, it's asking a lot of our brains and we need to be mindful of that and cognizant of it. And then also give your, your brain some grace in it. Like if you're trying to be better about this in the new year, don't beat yourself up. If you find yourself falling victim to it, because quite literally these things are set up for that exact reason. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm a big uh, fan and follower of Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm. And he talks a lot about self-awareness. And I, I think he's like the main guy when it comes to anything social media or any any of this, like the the whole idea of content, right? He's the king, I feel like, because he just knows the, the landscape, but he knows how to express this idea of being self-aware. And so where I'm going with that is, I think it's really important to be self-aware how we use these tools, right? Mm. Like, and, and so that we are, we stay in control. Otherwise, if we don't, it's going to control us. And that's when I think that that mental health comes in where we're like, man, is this actually bad for me? Right? Is this content consumption bad for me right now? I'm feeling overwhelmed. I know I feel overwhelmed sometimes and I have to take a break and I'm like, woo. And as a content creator, I think you can relate too because how much do we consume? How much do we create? It's a content driven world. <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be honest, I try not to consume a whole lot. I mean, I right. put, I have time, time restrictions on both the main social media apps that I'm using of, of Instagram and That's TikTok. Good. That's good. Um, and then if nothing else, because most people will do that and then they'll just ignore it. And I've been guilty of that as well, but at least right. it provides enough of a pattern interrupt that just stops you at the door. It's like that bouncer at the club that's like hey just <laughs> just double check and are you are you sure you want to go in here are you of age like maybe there's a cover involved whatever yeah. <laughs> you start to weigh the the uh the options you're like you know on second thought i'm good man i appreciate it but i'm gonna i'm gonna head home instead it's like yeah on second thought i'm gonna take my phone away like i don't want to watch more tiktoks i don't want to watch more reels i'm just gonna put this down and go do something more in real life because that's the true experience that we have. Yeah. And one of your, uh, your podcast episodes, you had a, a, what was his name? A Super Bowl champ recently. He was talking about being in the moment, right? Staying in the moment. Yeah. Ryan Monday. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I think I was really loving that conversation because I, you guys were talking about what that means. He was, he brought up the whole, uh, the book, the power, the power of now. Um, Talk about that. Talk about what you learned in that conversation and how that applies to the idea of mental health and staying and, and getting into the flow, because that's our next part of this. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I mean, to bridge to flow, right? Like flow doesn't happen anywhere else but now in the present moment. And truly life doesn't happen anywhere else but now in this present moment. So, I mean, really through that conversation, one of the biggest takeaways really was the, the brevity of the present moment truly how how to value the time that you have in front of us um, the importance of single tasking actually like just being here now on this podcast and not not worrying about <laughs> I literally have like my whiteboard of to do things right behind me here it's like not worrying about my whiteboard but just I'm here with Aaron and I'm I'm here now with you and we're gonna just jam on that and that's that was a huge takeaway from Ryan I mean one of the things I, I had asked him on there, I had saw him post something around like adult friendships and how they require such more intentionality. The older that you get, the busier you get. Once you get married, you have kids, the whole not, you know, all of that. And I was like, man, if if he is struggling, with, you know, is is really learning the lesson of now in that stage of his life, I can really set myself up now from personally being 27, single, not having to worry about that. I'm going to, I'm going to hone in on this so that I have room to add those things in because that's what I want. That's what I want in my life. I mean, I left the the full-time job that I had prior to doing forever athlete, primarily because I didn't see a long-term scalability vision of me there for the life that I wanted. I was working, I was leaving my apartment at 445, five in the morning. 
and I wasn't getting back until 8 p.m. And then I just would go to bed and, and do it all over again, Monday through Friday, and then go out on the weekends. And it was this vicious cycle of sorts. And I was like, this is fun, but fast forward 10 years, I want family, I want kids. How do I have space for that? Like, how would I be able to show up for that person, my partner and my children in the way that I would like to? It's just not possible in that role. So I proactively st probably stepped away a little bit too early uh, and just kind of jumped into the deep end and said, I'll figure out how to swim in this process. Isn't that kind of when the cool stuff happens when you just jump in and, and you just, that's what I do with this podcast too. I can relate. You know, I didn't know anything about podcasting or I had a little FOPO to fear of other people's opinions. Like, mm. oh, how am I going to look? How am I going to sound and all that stuff? So I, I get all that. Um, but no, it's it's really cool. I think it's really important to just like prioritize that, right? Because otherwise life just goes by, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing. Like it just it just goes and, and that whole oh. phrase... You know, that, getting... that phrase like time flies when you're having fun. I, I hear that and it probably does. But I think the idea is to slow it down. I don't I don't want it to fly by. Right? It's going to it's going to pass regardless. Like no matter what we do, we can't really control it. But you can control the quality of it. And that's, you know, through slowing down that time with single tasking, being present, being locked into the now. It's like. Flow is a really interesting state of being that we're constantly seeking as just humans, as individuals, but especially as athletes, because that's what we're so familiar with in our sport, because we're trying to then constantly recreate it afterwards. It's very interesting because in one breath, it makes time go by like that. It goes by faster than anything we've ever experienced. And then on the other side, it makes time go by so slow. And it's like that that one moment became an eternity and both are great. Both are great. Um, so it's, it's interesting that you say like, yeah, we just want to slow down time. It's like, well, to some extent we can through flow. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about flow. Cause this it's actually part of my project. It's something I ask everyone that comes on the show here is, is flow. Well, first of all, I want you to, to define it. Um, I think I know what it is. I think I, I, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say. And then I also want you to say, if you think if it's something you can practice, or do you just find yourself in it? Mm, great question. So I mean, tr first off, to define it, it's when you're locked in on that one thing in front of you, right? You're not worried about what's for dinner later, what that girl said to you five years ago, like you're here, you're here now. And that's the most important piece of it. In that hard work becomes easy. You're able to, to really get outside of your comfort zone and achieve things that otherwise probably wouldn't be able to do. Your efficiency goes through the roof. Your motivation goes through the roof as well. And you just become this like crazy workhorse of sorts. However, on the flip side, like flow is high energy. So it is something that you can practice. You can't force it, but you can really establish different ways to inspire and control um, and cultivate flow. And so the first one that I will say is kind of like understanding the win of it. Flow comes in a cycle. It's a four-part cycle, and we need all four parts to be able to achieve flow. So the first one is struggle which is the one that people want to avoid at all times, right? They're like, oh, why would I struggle? The goal is flow, Corey. Why are you telling me I need to struggle? It's because during struggle, that's when we develop skills. Struggle is vital for our ability to increase our skill set. Then we need to be able to release. And we need to be able to know, more importantly, when to release just before getting frustrated with that struggle. So if we're sitting at our desk, and we're banging out some work, and we find ourselves getting really frustrated, that's a really great sign. That's, hey, go take a break. Walk away for two minutes. The key with the good release is making sure that it's not stimulating to the brain. It's not something that you want to do more of. So it's not grabbing the phone and going on social media. It's not calling your parents and be like, hey, I miss you. What's up? Like, talk to me. It's not talking to a roommate. It's literally taking yourself away from that work that you were just struggling with, staring at a white wall, going for a walk around the block without headphones, something that 
when you come back to sit down to tr then hopefully get into flow, that activity that you're sitting back down to is more exciting than the thing that you were leaving. That's one thing that our generation sucks at doing. They want to just like keep doing things that excite them. So that, right, right. that's a release. Then you go into flow. Flow can last five minutes. It can last three hours, um, somewhere in between. Flow is high energy though. It is exhausting. And on the flip side of flow, you can feel it in conversation even, right? You have a really engaging like conversation. And you're just like, holy crap, I'm here. Exactly. And on the flip side of this, it's like, I know that this, I set up my day where I just had a client. I was so grateful that you gave me 15 minutes. because I was like, oh, thank goodness. If I was going to have to go back to back, we would have had to, you know, do a 30 second like meditation reset. Instead, I had 15 minutes to kind of gather my thoughts, energy, boom, let's go find some flow in this conversation. And then I know on the flip side of this, I need to take a longer break because the, the fourth stage of the flow cycle is recovery and recovery sets you up then to go back into that struggle. Just like an athlete needs to have that oscillation, right? If they're training, they can't just go train balls to the wall every single day. They need to have it oscillate, right? So wow. that's the understanding of the when. That's I love the flow cycle just as a really easy tool for people to start to understand. It's, the, it's your map. If you can sit and cultivate self-awareness to a point where you can recognize, I'm struggling right now, I'm frustrated, cool, release, boom, next thing. Or I'm bored right now. Okay, cool. I should probably sit down on something that is like really exciting to me. I'm going to find flow in that. Great. Awesome. Or I just came off of something really, really hard. What do I do now? I should probably recover a little bit. And that could be something 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or two hours, depending on how much time you got. From there, flow has actually 22 proven triggers to cultivate both 10 of which are individual and then 12 of which are group. And so without boring people and saying, okay, let's hear all 22. One of the ones that I, I've mentioned some of them earlier, right? Like present moment, complete concentration on the now. That's a huge one. Uh, risk tolerance is something for some people as well. Depending on your risk tolerance depends on, is that a flow trigger or a flow blocker? Like for me and for you, like jumping in, kind of just starting the podcast, rip the bandaid off, let's go. I would say you have a high risk tolerance around it. You're you're kind of like, all right, whatever. If this fails, this flops, no biggie. So Same true. For me with like <laughs> going to the business, I was like, I can live with forever athlete coming into this world and not panning out, but I can't live with this idea, staying at an idea in my head and me staying at this job for the rest of my life. And so I was willing to take that risk. And that risk has propelled me every single day to be like, okay, cool. What are we doing today? I need to like, move the needle forward because if I don't, I don't eat. I don't put food on my table. I don't, I can't pay for this. The lights on right now. So risk tolerance is a huge one. And then I'd say the most important one for people realistically in terms of finding their flow, their sweet spot is I talked about a little bit earlier, that importance of building out skills and improving your skills. So we have this like graph of sorts you have your challenges on one axis and your skills on the other axis. You have then this diagonal, this sweet spot that goes from zero skill to zero challenge all the way up to like really high skill needs a really high challenge. And then there's this window that exists on like either side of that line where flow can exist. We call that your flow channel. Having the ability to check in and say, okay, the task at hand that I'm doing right now how skilled am I actually at this thing? Am I really, really good? Or do I kind of suck? If I kind of suck at it, that's okay. I need to, in my next struggle phase, work on the skill. But for right now, I can't change it. It's go time. It's time to, time to perform, right? So instead, I would look to bring that challenge down to a place that falls within that window for me. So breaking down a larger challenge to something where I can really say, no, I'm feeling really confident stepping into that. You know, like if I've never done a, a podcast before and I stepped in here and I was like, oh my God, I need to answer all of Aaron's questions like to the best of my ability. That's, I don't know if I have that skill. So I could then say, well, I can't control what Aaron asked me. So 
why don't I just focus on answering the first question that he asked me? And I'll just like do that. Well, I know I can have a conversation. I've talked with people before. Great. And then from there I can build. And over time, now that I've been on hundreds of podcasts, it's like, okay, great. Aaron asked me, whatever I'm prepared for whatever conversation that we're going to have, we're going to roll with it. Um, so those, I know long-winded answer, I get really excited and I find flow talking about this stuff because <laughs> it just excites me. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. No, that's huge, man. I, I think, you know, I'm listening to you talk about flow and I'm, I'm listening, I'm thinking back to the other people that I've asked that question to. And I think the old school mentality is that, no, you cannot practice flow. You just find it in, mm. in mid, you know, stroke or mid whatever mid something right yeah um i think the new school mentality around flow is it's absolutely something you can practice because it's all about mindfulness everything you just said is about mindfulness these are all mindful practices right like mm. setting your intention you know um taking a deep breath really enjoying the moment giving gratitude for it right being so thankful and then finding yourself enthralled in something right where you're like whether you're good or bad at it but just you're you're so stoked that you're in it, right? Like 100%. I think I think that's all a part of flow, and I think it really helps when you're doing something you love. I think that's totally it. I, I think it helps exude that, right? For me, podcasting, I love this. I love connecting with like-minded people, and especially other podcasters. You know that we we both enjoy this medium, right? So I can find myself in the flow more um, when I'm doing something I love for sure. Yeah, I was about to say it's. It's important to, to note, like, you, like, I, I can't stress this enough. You can't force it. That doesn't mean you can't practice it. The more of those triggers that you can, like, find one, like, work for you and create your own formula of sorts, that increases the likelihood of your ability to find flow. And so, like, the mindfulness practice, like, the more you, rooted you are in your mindfulness practice, the more you're increasing your likeliness of finding flow. Like that's why the woo woo world is what it is. It's like these people have just increased their self-awareness to a level that has allowed them to then find more flow in their life. And, the yeah. That, yeah. And, and, and all <laughs> that, to me, all that goes back to emotional intelligence, right? Because, mm -hmm. and that's actually what my next book is about. Um, I'm, I'm writing about this idea of, of working on, using these feelings in all these aspects of our experience to be useful, right? Like, what am I feeling? How can I use it? And it's okay to not, to not be useful too. I'm not saying that you have to be useful all the time. You could just rest. That's okay yeah. too. I, I mean, think that's actually useful. rest that, is useful. Boy, right, right. <laughs> I just shared that for that flow cycle, that, that map of sorts for that exact reason, right? Like, yeah, most, most high achievers, think that they can just do struggle flow, struggle flow, and just like bounce back and forth, right? It's that mentality of, oh, if I just keep digging for gold, that next strike will like be gold. So I'm going to just keep going and I'm going to keep chipping away until I get there. And there is some value in that. But what the science has shown is there's more value in it. If you find yourself borderline exhausted, frustrated, trying to find flow, take a break. 10 minutes take a break right don't need a ton yeah. of time take a break it's okay then you'll come back to it i the paper that i wrote earlier this year looked at um actually emotional intelligence uh sleep and resonance breath work resonance breathing its impact on hrv heart rate variability and then our our likelihood to get into flow flow proneness of sorts and what I found, long story short, with emotional intelligence tools, with a good quality night's sleep, with resonance breath work, which is breathing at a, a frequency that fine tunes your nervous system, both your parasympathetic and sympathetic, and kind of resets the two. With those tools, you become more likely to get into flow. It doesn't mean that flow is impossible to get without them. If you don't have emotional intelligence tools, great. You can still find flow. But I promise you, if you go and do that work, if they read your next book, boom, I guarantee you instant boost in increasing the probability that they now find flow in what they're doing. That's the value, man. And all these books behind me, all these personal development books and podcasts, a lot of what that's doing 
is just increasing your emotional intelligence, increasing your awareness to then see and spot things to get excited, to then drive that flow and focus moving forward. Yes, which is all about energy and all about being inspired and all about taking bold action, which creates all these cool results that I think most people want, right? I think most people want great experiences. They want to feel good, right? They want to feel fired up, right? So the, the, the results they can, they can create from that are, ref are reflective of that right? The results are fired up. The results are, are make, going back, making a full circle, make them feel good. I want to feel good. I want to get good results. I want the good results to make me even feel better, right? Which is all emotional intelligence. So yeah, man, I, I, I totally feel you. And I, I really respect what you're doing too with Forever Athlete and your podcast is, is great. Um, before we wrap things up, I actually just have a few other things. So ice baths, I, uh, I think that's really relatable <laughs> to athletes, it. but, but not just athletes, right? Everyone, not everyone, but a lot more people are finding value out of, uh, uh, hydrotherapy, which mm -hmm. is like uh, hot, cold, hot, cold, but ice baths. Talk about your experience. I, I see on your IG that you, you, uh, you love yourself a, a nice ice bath. <laughs> we get some ice baths in, man. As do I, as do I. Sure. I. Yeah. But I love like, it. It's but, but, um wait wait before you go I want to tell you real quick for me what's what happens is it's a oh it's like it's like so gnarly at first <laughs> I'm like am I sure that I'm really doing this but then after a while I'd like love it um talk about your experience with it talk about the benefits you've you've discovered from it I promise you that feeling never truly goes away no matter how frequently <laughs> you do ice baths I still second guess <laughs> most of them right even if externally on video it looks like i'm not if i look like i'm chilling internally i promise you i'm like this is gonna suck and then again like it does get a little bit easier with time i'm a little bit out of practice right now i don't have the same when i was in la i had an ice bath at my house so it was like great i could go every single day i could go multiple times a week now it's at my gym but it's only open from certain hours and I've been really finding my groove going really early in the morning before that ice bath and sauna is open, unfortunately. Um, but it's funny, dude, when I swam, I was so like, no ice bath, screw that. That's, that's not what I want to do. They sucked. I mean, I remember very vividly, like grabbing that ice container from your hotel room, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. and like Running down yep. the hallway, like yep. going to that vending, that ice vending machine, grabbing a bucket of ice and then like, having to run back, dump that in. And yep. the next thing you know, you did like 50 trips to just fill the ice, like in the bathtub. <laughs> and then everyone else in your hall is like, dude, who took all the ice? And you're like, they didn't see me doing all those trips. I hated those. I, I dreaded them and very rarely did them, honestly. But for me now, um, I talked just briefly about heart rate variability and those not familiar with that term, HRV. Really what it shows is how fine-tuned your, your parasympathetic nervous system is with your sympathetic nervous system, your ANS. And so if those are fine-tuned, you have a higher HRV value. And one of the ways that you can train your heart rate variability is by intentionally putting yourself in fight or flight situations, training one side of the nervous system, and then also training the other side of the, the nervous system. So flipping back and forth of like, I can relax in the sauna. Great, cool, rest and digest. I can chill. I can then go into an ice bath. Boom, instant fight or flight. And then training, I like to treat it as like, how can I train my heart rate mm -hmm. and my breath to allow me to get back into this like centered state as quickly as possible? Yeah. I would play this game actually where I would use my watch in my phone and I would look at when I get in an ice bath, how quickly can I stop that increase in heart rate? So if I can stop it from getting to 80 degree, 80 beats per minute, even mm -hmm. awesome. I'm in a good spot. And then the second part of the game I would play is how quickly can I get it back down? Right, right, right. To my resting, like in the forties. Sometimes I've, when I was really in the practice, like I could get my heart rate back down to like 38, 39 beats per minute in the, in the ice bath. I was like, wow. all right, cool. If I can be cool in an ice bath, I can handle whatever life throws at me after wow. this. So that's the 40. That's why I, I loved it. Wow. I was, 
I'm going to preference that as I was an endurance athlete for a majority of my life. So I have okay. a genetic predisposition towards it being significantly lower than, than most. I, I don't want people say, to hear that and be yeah. like, I need to have a resting heart rate of 38. <laughs> you don't. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say under 40 is like super legit. That's wow. Um, yeah, no, anyone listening who hasn't tried an ice bath, go try it. Because I think you'll feel Agus better. More. I want to see it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. A um, couple more things, Corey. Um, we mentioned before we started recording about the journey of the sober athlete. Now, I mm. told you I've been on that journey. I know you've you've been on that journey. Talk about what that's done for you and, um, you know, just how that's kind of benefited you. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, keeping in the theme here, um, I'm coming up on two years in like a week or two. Um, I have an easy date to remember. It's just January 1 uh, because that was what did it for me. But, you know, it was really in this place of I wanted to be able to process emotion on my terms and consciously go into these things. And what I found was when I was drinking and I was drinking quite heavily, I struggled honestly to do anything half-assed. It's like all in foot on the gas or no. Um, I found myself then getting triggered or dealing with certain things in my day-to-day -day life by then numbing it out and avoiding the, the pain or the emotion on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And so for me in that nearly two-year journey, it's been filled with being able to process a lot faster because I have no other choice to like, I have to feel it. You know what I mean? Like there's no other, there's no ripping 10 shots and then going out and saying, mm -hmm. whatever, I, I hate my job, but I'll deal with it on Monday or I'll deal with it on Sunday. And what I found was it's allowed me to stop resisting things. And therefore it's allowed things to stop persisting in my life. It's allowed me to actually make change. It's allowed me to make change a lot faster than I was trying to beforehand. And it's had all these other benefits, right? Like dating the past two years has been very interesting because I'm meeting people and I can tell a lot earlier on that like, hey, this isn't a match. This isn't a vibe. Like I'm out of here. Um, right, whereas right. before for me, when alcohol was mixed, I I struggled to pick up on those signals a lot more. And I found myself just stringing people along and then then having this realization like a month, two months, three months in even and being like, I'm not ready for this actually, sorry. Like I gotta go and being a, a shitty dude at times, you know, I'll, I'll own up to it. So yeah, a lot of that journey has been just me kind of doing some internal self-reflection and I found it to be hugely beneficial. And I, I commend you on the four months. And I, I also say to people, like, you don't need to go that route it just worked for me and it sounds like it's working for you, but try it out. I, I always encourage people to try a sober, curious lifestyle, at least where they're yeah. open to exploring new activities beyond just the classic drinking culture. So you don't need to go full blown sober, but try something else. Try a date, try a first date without drinks, try doing something instead totally. um, that opens you up to actually feeling the energy of that other person that you're spending time with, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, long story short, that's, uh, that's been the journey so far. Yeah, no, I, 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 first of all, I think it's awesome. And to show it on social media is even, I think more awesome, right? Because now, now you're sharing, you know, you're sharing and, and, ho and hopefully inspiring, which it, which it did. I told you it inspired me, especially as an athlete, right? Cause one of the first things that, you know, adult athletes do you know, after winning, what are the, what's the first thing that you see, right? Champagne. You see champagne everywhere, right? Everywhere. Right. And it's, it becomes part of like, oh yeah, that's what I get to do. I, I can look forward to that. And I think, I think what's happening now uh, in my um, experience anyway, not just with sport, but I think what's happening now is like, there's a new school mentality, which is like, it's up to you. You know, it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be this. And like, I just recently went on a trip uh, back East and I went to a fancy restaurant and I was, I was a little in my head. Cause I was like, okay, I know I'm not going to drink, but I don't want to be judged and all that stuff. 
And sure enough, there was a zero menu. You know, I sat at the bar. It was like they made me a nice fancy zero cocktail. And it was like, and everyone was cool. And I think I think what I love about that is that people are are okay, number one, with whatever you want to do. It's up to mm-hmm. you. But number two, if you don't want to drink, that I actually I think people respect that. They're like, hey, you're actually doing making a choice from self-love number one yeah. and you want to feel you don't want to feel like crap tomorrow good for you you know you know a hundred percent i was about to say i think one of the best things for me i really lucked out because i so i started january 20 or january 1st 2021 and moved to la like two weeks later and i had moved in with two guys that i grew up swimming with and known since i was nine years old and I really commend them and appreciate the way that they handle it. Cause like first night they were like, all right, dude, like, are you ready to party? Like, I know you said you, you've been doing this like sober thing for a few weeks, but now it's like middle of the month. Like, where are you at? (laughs) And I was just like, Hey, like I'm still in a space where I'm, I don't want to do that. Right. All I ask is that like, you guys respect that. And I will let you know if, if, and when that changes. And they were like, awesome, man. Cool. Say no yeah. more. Yeah. Like whatever you need to do, like we're here for you, whatever we can do to support you. Totally. And I was like, wow, that was yeah. way easier than I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, so like having the right people, I think around you to your point makes a huge difference. If you can communicate from that space of like, this is the why you're doing it. People, people should be able to respect that. Uh, and if they don't yeah. create some space from them. Totally, 100%. And on top of that, now there's so many more different ways to go party and to go have fun. Like there's so many cool like drinks with adaptogens and, you know, like green tea and all this cool stuff that you still get like a vibe from and you can still be social without having the the effect of alcohol on like the negative effect, right? Because there's there's so many more studies coming out now. There's negative effects on the organs. There's negative effect on the brain. There's negative effect on aging. Like there's all these really bad things about it, you know? Yeah, so. I was about to say, it's a, it's crazy to see how the impact of just a, a substance like that can have all around on us. Yeah, I know. Okay, uh, Corey, last couple things. Uh, uh, I know I just said that, but <laughs> a couple more things. So the game of podcasting, I... Like I told you before, I love talking to podcasters because um, I think that we can really relate to each other when it comes to creating a platform for ourselves, creating a platform for other people, and then just having fun with it, right? Mm -hmm. One of the cool things for me is that there's no rules in podcasting, you know, and you can just go do you do you and like connect with other people that really uh, are attracted to your vibe. Right. I, that, I mean, that's why we're meeting right now. Yeah. You know, talk about the game of podcasting, how the how podcasting has changed or enhanced your life and the future of it. Yeah, man. I I mean, for me personally, it's opened up so many doors. It's right. It's put me into so many rooms and made so many introductions with people that I quite frankly didn't think I had any business talking with, you know what I mean, or speaking with. and if I didn't have that podcast, I don't think they would have given me the time of day. And that's just kind of like the nature of uh, the world that we live in these yep. days. So it's I'm forever grateful for it. And I think I'm forever grateful too, for my ability to realize the true power of it years ago. Um, and realizing that it's, it's a no brainer ask to just shamelessly ask people to be on your podcast. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you sure. Look up to someone you, you aspire to be them or, you aspire to be like certain parts of them, I guess is a better way to say it because we're all unique individuals and we have our own superpowers. Mm-hmm. Then inviting them to say, hey, an hour, give an hour, 40 minutes of your day, you can come on my show and you can talk about yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 99% of people are saying yes to that. It's the 1% that are a little bit harder to get down, right? But they probably don't need to do that anymore, right? It's like- right, right. So I'd say that's that's been the biggest thing for me is just leveraging that and taking ownership of ownership of it and not shying away from it, like actually yeah. using it and treating it as such. And then that 
has like increased the level of the uh, conversation in the show over the years here. So it's been, it's been fun, man, but it's a grind. A lot of people don't realize the it's a lot of work scenes, <laughs> the back and forth. Yeah, you see yeah. it, you listen to an hour, you listen to 40 minutes or whatever it may be, but there's so much that goes into that just to, from the reaching out, getting things scheduled, rescheduling if you need to reschedule, actually having it line up, recording, doing any <laughs> content clipping that you're going to do, then artwork yeah. for the show, show notes, put it up. And it's like, it it truly is, I mean, for people listening this far, like it means the world to podcasters when you do actually share the podcast, when you do actually review the podcast, when you subscribe, when you follow it. So do Aaron a favor, <laughs> do myself a favor, go subscribe to his podcast. Like if you're listening this far, you have no reason not to be subscribed to this show. So you're going to get more of that. Um, but it's easy to, to overlook that, I think, from a consumer standpoint. So it's like, it's the one thing I wish people knew more of behind the scenes. Oh, man, I really appreciate that. And and in a second, I'm going to let you plug your own show and all your programs. But I would just want to continue that thought for a minute, because you on your last podcast episode, you recently had an Olympian. Remind me of her name, please. Um, Allison. Alice Gibson? Diver. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. she was talking about uh, the transition from athlete life to professional life. And I think this is really, 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 really relatable right now, because there's so many athletes that are looking to content creators, they want to be a content creator, right? So bridge that gap for a second. How do you how do you become an athlete and bridge yourself into being a professional, like content creator that actually can do this for a career? Yeah, well, I think it starts with building a an actual personal brand while you're still right. in it like right. the opportunity that athletes have while they still have their name attached to something bigger than them is unmatched whether that be their school their university their team whatever right like you have the power of a brand behind you so say you play football for ohio state and it's like ohio state football is a really solid powerful brand I need to be able to leverage that if I'm a player for them. So yes, I can like show the, this is what my practice looks like as a Ohio state football player, or like, this is, this is the highlights of me at my latest game playing for Ohio state. It's funny that I chose Ohio state at a random, like I hate Ohio state, not the fan, <laughs> but they're just on my mind. They're taking up rent, I guess. So they're winning right now. Um, but if I'm, if I'm, where an athlete needs to start bridging that gap and actually will help ease, ease the transition as a whole is while they're still in it, the content they're creating gets to be diverse. It gets to be holistic. It gets to show more of them as a personality rather than just them as an athlete performing. And that's really challenging. I think athletes put a lot of emphasis of like, oh, I'm going to be this content creator and I'm just going to throw up highlights. Like I made this sick catch this weekend. I always joked like swimming was just not a highlight sport. Like I wish I had a sport that I was a lot better at that I could say that, yo, this was sick. Like go watch me do this. But swimming's not a really fun party trick um, and doesn't really perform that well, except for the niche like swimmer uh, audience on the internet. So athletes are recognizing that they can create content outside of their sport, start to slowly like branch out. You see runners do this for running content, right? They're not just giving you runner workouts. They're giving you weight workouts to do that complement running. They're giving you everything that they eat in a day videos. They're giving you like their sleep schedule, their morning routines, their day, their nighttime routines, the other habits that they're doing. And they start to bridge and create this diagram outwards. Sure. And athletes can leverage that personal brand and that, that power of the bigger brand that they're attached to, to then start to build really a loyal community that likes them as a, as a personality and as a human, not just them on the field yeah. and understanding that like that takes time. It's not something that you have to be perfect at right away, but intentionally doing that, not only are you going to help your own identity development and get some creative outlets going, but you're also going to be opening yourself up to a ton more NIL and like branding deals that otherwise 
wouldn't be on the table. There's very few, like for every Bryce Young and, you know, style guys that exist out in the world, Caleb Williams, right? There's 99 other guys like that, or 999 other guys like that in college football alone, right? So if they're one in a thousand or one in 10,000, they're going to, they don't have to worry about building a personal brand outside of football for the most part on social. These, these companies are going to come to them and say, Hey, you just won the Heisman. Here's this brand deal. And they're going to be like, cool. I'll post about whatever. It's the, everyone else, it's the swimmers, it's the volleyball players. It's the, you know, like the ones that might not necessarily get the organic brand deals just because you're naturally great at your sport those are the ones that you're going to benefit the most from developing a holistic brand and a holistic identity beyond just athletics as well yeah man well said you know this whole nil uh landscape that we're in for collegiate athletes has i think just completely opened the door and even like now high school athletes are starting Mm -hmm. to think about that they're like okay how am i going to really use that you know when i get there um, so yeah, it's, there's a lot of opportunity. I would just add on to everything you said, and I would just say, find your niche, find mm-hmm. something to differentiate, differentiate yourself, you know, don't just show the, the, the practice highlights, but there's a, there's another reason why show this for this, right? Like really unpack that, get sub sub niche. Um, and I think that's important because right now we talked about Gary V, right? Attention is the new currency, right? How are you going to keep someone's attention? Right. I think that's important to think about doing content creation. A hundred percent. I was like, there's some athletes right now that I follow that are like phenomenal at that. Emily Cole is a runner outside of, out of Duke, Mm -hmm. um, who's still on the track and field team, cross country team there, who does a fantastic job at creating content there. Um, Victoria Garrick with opponent, like she, she started to do that. I mean, she was ahead of the game, man. She was doing this years ago. And is really seeing um, some benefit there. So there's there's a lot of really good examples out there to look at and get inspired by. Um, and that's that's to bring it full circle, right? We talked about comparison. It's like instead, how can you get, use other people's creations to be constructive towards your own and be mm. inspired towards creating your own? And I think. You let, you answered it perfectly earlier of just leading with curiosity. That's a huge overlooked element. But if you just show up curious, good things happen. Yeah. And you mentioned Vic, like Victoria Garrick, like she, I'm a huge fan of hers, right? Because we are, we are actually on a movie together in 2019. And I, I was able to pick her brain quite a bit because she actually did a TED Talk while she was in college, right? Mm. And that just set her her life up, right? She She just set herself up as an authority in the space of mental health because she was vulnerable and authentic and put herself out there. And now she's, you know, she is who she is because of that. So I think that's huge. Yeah. A hundred percent. I love her stuff and it's been cool to see how she then sprinkles in outside of that too. Like yeah, her and Max and and everything else growing. It's like, I'm speaking like I know them and I'm like, I (laughs) literally follow their content, but right, right, right. Yeah. That's the nature of it. Corey, this is an amazing conversation. Uh, before we go, take a moment, plug any of your socials, websites, your own podcast, books, all that stuff. Go. Yeah, man. Aaron, again, thank you for the space. This has been a blast. I I enjoy talking about this stuff, but even more so with people that get it. So I appreciate you reaching out, having me on. If people connected with me here, like reach out on Instagram, Corey Camp, C-R-Y-C-A-M-P is the main thing for every athlete on TikTok. We got um, forever-athlete.com has everything from the retreats that we do, the courses we host, the coaching, um, pretty much everything is there. And Forever Athlete Radio is on all podcast platforms. Perfect. Awesome. There's a lot of synergy between our brands, the Inspired Athlete and the Forever Athlete. So we got lots more to talk about. But uh, again, man, I appreciate your time today. And for all the listeners out there, thank you guys for sticking with us if you made it this far. And um, stay inspired, everybody. You know, stay inspired. That's what it's all about. (laughs) 